Hey guys, welcome to Breckenridge County, Kentucky. We're at Rough River, my home lake, for our very first show of On the Hook. I am joined here with Miss Meredith Debris from Economic Development. Meredith? Thank you for having me. I, I'm glad to be here and I appreciate y'all having us uh, down here and helping out with everything. And I just want to talk about the lake for a minute. It's an amazing lake. It's a beautiful lake. We are so proud of our lake. About 5,500 acres. And uh, it is uh, a lot longer than it is wide because of the it being an upland reservoir and the way that it just uh, sets. It has got all kinds of activities around here that they can do on the water and off with some of the local businesses. It does. We have so many local businesses right here in the area. We have got restaurants and these are locally owned, family owned restaurants uh, that have been in the community for years. There are so many more opportunities now here than there used to be. And uh, it's all because people come to this community and visit this lake and fall in love with it and keep coming back. And uh, uh, we're, we're so happy to see that growth continue. No matter where I ever live for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. Breckenridge County will always be home. Oh, well, we're glad. Well, I appreciate <laughs> you having us here. No, we are so glad that your first show is going to be here in Breckenridge County. Right here on Rough River <laughs> Lake. I'm ready to hit the water. Let's go Let's see if it. we can get something <laughs> on the hook. I spent most of my life chasing, chasing success, chasing money, chasing respect. Truth is, nothing has brought me joy like being right here on the water. Rod in hand, hook on the line, chasing crappie. I am a crappie angler. These are our stories, and this is On the Hook. This is actually a very proud moment for me to be able to uh, be a part of this show and share our joy for the outdoors here on a lake that I grew up on. Uh, right over there is uh, Lick Creek. My papa's buried at the end of Lick Creek up there at Sand Knob Cemetery. Huh. Which I guess is pretty smart because that's a good way to make sure I come see him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we are blessed to live I've, I've lived around this lake for over 40 years. And uh, when they first put it in, my parents bought a place down here. I'm Jeff Goodermuth, and I'm a crappie fisherman. I didn't grow up in a fishing family. I didn't start fishing until later on in my life. And I remember about 10 years ago, I ended up with cancer and paralyzed. I remember laying in the hospital bed, uh, not being able to feel anything from my chest down, and talking to my dad, and I said, well, Dad, Looks like we're done crappie fishing together. And uh, I guess God had other plans because here I am 10 years later, cancer free, and still going after the big ones. I've been on the lake about all my life, but like I said, I never did really fish until uh, after I got married. I just, uh, I might have fished, you know, two or three times down here just by accident being down here when camping when somebody was fishing, but. Yeah. I actually only started crappie fishing four years ago. Me and Dad had always come down here and run trot lines and stuff, because that's what him and Papa always did. And uh, that's how they caught their fish, and I didn't know any other way to fish. There it is. And, well, we made a lot of really good memories out here. There we go. I believe that one there was going to stretch out there for a keeper. For me out here on Rough River, it's not just about catching fish. It's about the scenery that you can see while you're out here. Just the other day, I was out here fishing and I was able to actually videotape with my phone an albino doe walking down the bank. It's about the being in the outdoors out here. It's about the people. It's about the memories I made growing up right here on this lake with my dad, with my papa, with my boys now. So that's three different generations of memories that have been made right here that I've been involved with, and that's what it's about for me. Fourth of July, and we are sitting on a boat in t-shirts and shorts, fishing with a bobber, catching crappie. There's so many people that think that uh, a good time and fish both cannot be caught this time of year when you're talking about crappie fishing. And that just couldn't be further from the truth. 
Do you think the black crop, it could be a little more aggressive than the white ones when it comes to hitting? Well, it depends on where you are. Uh, right here, right now, they're proving to be more aggressive. These blackfish bite different though. Whitefish will usually just one gulp, hammer it. The blackfish like to go up there and they'll like hit it real fast, real quick. And a lot of times if you don't wait till they load up, when you set the hook, well, we'll be missing the fish. So I was sitting there letting him chomp on it there a little bit, get a taste for it, and then hoping that he'd go ahead and hit it. Rough River is a hard lake to learn different techniques on. But if you can master those different techniques on a small upland reservoir like Rough River, you can go out to any lake in the entire country and repeat that. LifeScope is the hottest tech to hit the crappie industry in a generation. And now you can have absolute independent control of your transducer with All Aboard Marine's All Scan Electric Mounting System. Scan with your transducer in one degree increments or use its hand control option. With just the flip of a switch, the hybrid control syncs with the movement of your trolling motor or lock it out and use our foot switch. You are in complete control with All Aboard Marine. To find out more, visit allaboardmarine.com. Electronics aren't cheap, and that's why Cornfield Fishing Gear engineers quality mounting equipment that secures your investment and gives you peace of mind. Fish more and worry less with mounting equipment from Cornfield Fishing Gear. Cornfieldfishinggear.com. PTG Outdoors is family owned and sells, installs, and services your favorite electronics, as well as all the tackle you want too. We even service kayaks. Next time you're at Grenada Lake, stop by or find us at ProTeamGuides.com. On the Hook is presented by Ozark Rods in partnership with All Aboard Marine, Cornfield Fishing, Crappie Monster, Driftmaster, and JB's Fish Sauce. Finally got one. Here we go. No, no. That's caper though. White fish. White fish on that pile. Calm down, baby. Now the length minimum here at Rough River is nine inches, correct? Yes. And how many a day? Twenty. Twenty a day. That's a nine and a half inch. Oh, here we go. We got another one coming in here. Got a little double going on. A lot of good eater fish here in rough. And that's another white. I think mine's bigger. Yeah, you're right. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Now, of course, we're releasing those fish. Both of those were over the minimum uh, length limit, but we're just out here uh, having fun, uh, having good fellowship. There you go. Yep. Well, Damn. I guess if we was having good fellowship, you would have grabbed me a minute. <laughs> well, here I did. I got you this one. <laughs> oh, man. And fishing in general, is a way that the world gets a lot smaller. You meet people you wouldn't normally meet. Jeff Guttermuth, outstanding guy, a very admirable person. I would not have known him if it hadn't been for crappie fishing. That's how that we uh, got our start and how that we met was through crappie fishing. Jeff, he helps with uh, uh, youth ministries. Jeff, he was paralyzed from cancer and he beat it. 
and he went fishing because that's what he wanted to do. He'd done it with his dad. And that is the story of fishing in general. That's what keeps us coming back out here is the memories of stuff like that and the inspirational stories that people derive from fishing. That's what got me into it, and that's why I do it. You can uh, come down and stand on most any of these boat docks down here with just a simple rig and throw out. And... Here is a perfect tip for that, for all the guys at home watching. These boat docks anywhere in the country are a great place to go fishing. What do you look for though? You look for somebody who spends money on their dock. Brand new renovated dock right there. It's reasonable to assume that they took the time to put brush in around it. And I know that uh, those people are the ones who put this brush in because I saw them doing it when the water was down. <laughs> and then we came back here side scan. Oh, Missy. We came back here and side scan and found this uh, pile and decided to stop and fish it. It's got a ton of fish on it. I don't know whether to keep on feeding them or stop and cut my line and retie. Now you, you tie it tight to the jig head or do you loop knot it? That is a loaded question. It depends on what it is. Uh, the minnow hooks, if I use a straight minnow hook, most of the time, I tie it tight to the minnow hook because the minnow hooks you've been buying, like at uh, big department stores and stuff, the eye's not fully closed. Right. And if you loop knot it, it'll spin around there and you'll end up losing your hook and all mm -hmm. and just pulling back a knot. So I use a improved cinch knot most of the time. Now, uh, jig heads, vertical jigging, a lot of times I'll just use a loop knot and leave it loose. I've got several cranks on it. There's a little black fish. That mm -hmm. right there ain't gonna make the cut. They got a good belly on them though. They are healthy. Yeah. They're very healthy. Yeah, that one's a little fat dude. He's been uh, feeding up pretty good. Bunch of light bites, and this dude just eat that thing. Well, them dudes are pretty, mm -hmm. and they're healthy too. That just lets me know that we've got a good crop coming on for next year. day is unique on the water, but ProBuilt Jigs has your back no matter your approach. Whether it's boat flipping, long runs, dock skipping, or just for fun, ProBuilt Jigs has the hookup for you. The Hook is presented by Ozark Rods in partnership with ProBuilt Jigs, PTG Outdoors, 
Skinny Water Marine, and Sore Mouth Tackle. Well, a pound test line you're running on these spinning reels. I believe it's eight pound on these. I think that's what I, I just grabbed this bull out and didn't pay much attention. I just know it was clear and it was mono. But I usually only use uh, eights about as big as I'll go. Mm -hmm. Now, I went all the way down to a two in super clear water where that I was having issues with them uh, not wanting to bite because I thought they were seeing my line. Right. So I went all the way down to a two. Now that makes it a bear to keep from breaking off. Mm -hmm. Well, I used to use uh, this stuff called Bonnell Brown. Four pound test only. Yeah. And uh, thinking that the fish couldn't see that brown line and darker water. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't a real dark brown. But, and uh, went from that to eight pound high vis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another black. Mm -hmm. uh, I hate to get slime on your boat floor. <laughs> I hope we get her all slimed up yeah, today. That thing's thick. Thick. Today we're using slip bobbers. That's something that's not used out on a tournament trail hardly ever. It, it's not something that's televised. It's something that we use to catch fish and just go fishing. We find those fish on the brush pile stacked up the way that they were uh, for this show. We're throwing in a slip bobber and we are just fishing. We don't have a lot of pressure from the world to catch the biggest fish on air. We're catching them to eat, we're catching them for fun. We're catching them to help get other people outside and show people that you can crappie fish in the middle of the summer with a bobber if you want to. You don't have to have every electronic under the sun. You don't have to have all the best of everything. All you need is a rod and a bobber. Oh, got one? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, it felt good anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't gonna tell nobody. It ain't like we're taping or nothing. <laughs> Man, that little dude hammered it. I'm telling you. Sorry. Fun fishing, a good time. Oh, it don't get any better. It's got the numbers of nine to 11 inch fish, in which what we're doing right now doesn't do the lake justice to the size of the fish that are here because we are fishing in the middle of the summer post spawn. Uh, during the spawn, you can catch a lot of pound and a quarter plus fish. Am I swimming or am I going backwards? It looks backwards? like you are. I think I was. I first thought, well, I'm moving backwards, and that's what it is. Man, she's going to keep on blowing me. I'm going to have to go to the... Oh, yeah. Oh, nice flash. There we go. That's a good eater. Yeah, that's a good eater right there. That right there is what we was out here looking for. Come down here and... Get you a mess of those and go home and fry them up for supper with some potatoes and coleslaw. <laughs> Show <laughs> boy. I'm getting hungry. My belly's growling now. That right there is about eight and a half inches. Ah, he might stretch. So in a few months. These will end up all being keepers on his mm -hmm. pile. These are what I call the summertime fish. When the water temp starts coming up, the smaller class of fish will uh, congregate on these brush piles. And they do it here, they do it at Truman, Missouri. Uh, they do it everywhere. The smaller fish will come in in big, massive hordes 
on these brush piles. And right there, about eight and a half inches. Ah, he might stretch. You can tell from the vertical bars on the side that it's a white crappie. And the thing I like about these fish, uh, like this one is just, if it's a keeper, it's barely a keeper. Their eyeballs aren't that big. Mm -hmm. A lot of lakes you go to, and the smaller fish will have eyeballs the size of a quarter, and that's how you know it's overpopulated. Uh, that's an older fish that's just stunted. Right. And these don't have those big, huge eyeballs. Comes a couple more at you. Get him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's another keeper. So you think they've been preferring the little minnows? Yes, I do. Very yes. much. I put on a big minnow while ago, and I like to never got a bite. And this morning when I was getting bites and you weren't, I got to looking and it looked like uh, your minnow was a little bit bigger than mine. Of course, I wasn't gonna tell you that. Right. <laughs> Man, this is awesome being able to go out. And of course, we don't need the fish because I mean, you fish all the time. So I'm not gonna fill my freezer up and take the possibility of fish freezer burning. But to know that I can feed my family right here off of a natural resource. Right. Any time of the year. It's a good feeling to always have a backup plan. Mm -hmm. Here it is. It's one of them things people just gonna have to beat me off the lake, make me go home. I was getting stressed out at work and uh, I was working for myself doing construction. Of course, the phone calls never stopped or nothing like that. Something was always going on. And I started coming down here I wouldn't even bring bait. I just come to the lake in a fishing pole so that my phone wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. And that's how that I got started coming down here fishing. And I started taking off work every day for four months. I took off and come out here and I walked the banks of this uh, lake right here. So I taught myself how to crappie fish. So I just needed a break. I needed to get away from the job and everything and fishing is very relaxing to me and then i thought well you know if i can find some way to make money at this i can do this for a living so that's when i started making the baits for crappie monster and stuff and that's when i opened crappie monster and now uh we've started this show because i want to share my experience with other people and help them have an easier uh, pathway to get into crappie fishing. Um, just because of my personal enjoyment for it, and I saw what it does for other people, to be able to uh, share that with somebody else, and uh, I mean, out of all this, if we change one person's life, it's worth it. Man, I think we've had a pretty good day. Oh, I guarantee it, I guarantee it. You know. Uh, uh, Got a bunch of boat slime in your boat for you, and <laughs> I think I've uh, mashed a few minnows too. But yes, sir, uh, I'll clean it out for you if you need me to. Oh, no, it's all right. <laughs> it's a boat, man. It's always a good day when you got fish slime in the boat. Yeah. Well, Jeff, uh, I appreciate you being here with me, buddy. Uh, I've had an awesome time, and it ain't even dinner yet, and it, it's time to go. I know, I know. It's been a great morning. Great yes, morning. Yes, uh, a lot of fish, great fishery. Uh, had a lot of fun. I mean, oh, yeah. th that's it. I just, I had a lot of fun. And uh, I can't think of what else you can do other than that. We went out there and we put them on the hook. We did. On the hook. On the hook. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure and be on the lookout right here every week for new episodes. We're gonna be going to Grenada, Mississippi. We're gonna be going to Truman, Missouri. We're gonna be going to Kentucky Lake. We're gonna travel the country and show you how to put them on the hook.